I have in my hands today an RTX 5090 Founders Edition GPU, a GPU that I've been covering for quite some time and have been very, very excited to test. And I got to tell you guys, this graphics card is way, way better than the RTX 4090, and I'm gonna explain to you exactly why. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Now, most of this is coming down to the cooler and that's what I'm going to be focusing in on today, but even the unboxing experience is pretty nice on the RTX 5090. And I do appreciate how not only is the packaging smaller, but it's 100% plastic free, which is excellent to hear. But enough about the unboxing itself. Very cool, love the design, but the real talk is about the 5090 itself. And guys, the RTX 5090, when I first saw it at CES, I was expecting it to not really fit in my case that well. Now that might kind of sound strange, but because they've thinned this graphics card so much when compared to the RTX 4090, it actually looked a lot wider than it really is in person, but have no fear, the RTX 5090 is definitely going to fit in your case. Having it in my hands right now, I can tell you it is much much smaller than the RTX 4090. And along with a couple of other things, including the specs, I think that's why the RTX 5090 is gonna be considered overall, at least the Founders Edition, a much better GPU design-wise than the RTX 4090. And the best thing about the RTX 5090 is that because NVIDIA's re-engineered this GPU for higher airflow thanks to a smaller PCB and a redesigned shroud, well, that does actually allow for better cooling performance than you might expect out of such a small graphics card. And according to some information online, it also comes with liquid metal on the GPU or so I've heard. And if that's the case, because I can't tear it down myself yet, well then the RTX 5090 is likely gonna have very, very good cooling performance as liquid metal has the ability to transfer far more heat than any thermal paste or thermal pad, allowing for that heat to get out of the GPU into the cooler and with the higher airflow out of the car much faster. And doing all this in a much smaller form factor, you might expect that the temperatures or the noise from the graphics card is going to be much higher, but based on all this information about the GPU that we've just learned with its higher airflow and liquid metal design, I actually don't expect that's going to be the case. If I was to make a guess, and I haven't tested it yet, and I can't talk about it yet either, even if I had, but if I was to guess based on that information, I would suspect that the RTX 5090's cooling performance is probably going to be somewhat similar both in terms of temperature and noise to the RTX RTX 4090. But again, that's just a guess. And if that does turn out to be the case, I'll be very, very impressed because the RTX 5090 has an insane 575 watt TDP for the GPU. And that's despite the much smaller design overall. And I do got to say the design does look absolutely beautiful as always. But now let's talk about those specs as I show you some more B-roll of the card. So the RTX 5090, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that this card is going to be a massive improvement over the 4090, not just in its design, as well as it being much smaller, but also in the specs as well. We're talking about 33% more cores with 170 SMs versus 128 on the 40. 90. Strangely, the boost clock is apparently down from 2.52 gigahertz on the 4090 to 2.41 for the boost clock in the 5090, although I'm a little bit skeptical of that. We'll have to wait and see when I actually do my testing what the final clock speeds are, but that's what it says on their website right now. Again, we'll see, but it also has 33% more memory, 32 gigabytes versus 24 gigabytes on the 4090, so you are not going to run out of memory on this card. And most importantly, 78% more memory memory bandwidth on the RTX 5090. Now I do suspect this will not only allow the RTX 5090 to scale fairly well with its cores, but I also suspect this will lead to very good performance in super high resolution gaming with maybe more consistency than what you'd see out of an RTX 4090 as not only do you have more memory, but much higher memory bandwidth allowing for those textures to be loaded in and out very, very quickly to the GPU. And it also does have PCIe 
5.0 as well, meaning faster communication with your CPU on top of that. So in terms of the memory performance and data transfer capabilities, the RTX 5090 just seems to be a massive, massive improvement over the RTX 4090. And it does also have some really huge improvements to ray tracing and especially AI on this series of cards. So I think especially a lot of the improvements you're gonna see with the RTX 50 series is gonna come in the form of AI and software that brings it ahead of its competition. But I do suspect it'll be very, very fast as well just based on looking at the specs. But this does come at a cost, and this is something that a lot of people aren't really talking about, but it's actually gonna be drawing 28% more power than the RTX 4090, and it's gonna cost 25% more money out of your wallet, coming in at $2,000, or I believe $1,999 versus the $1,599 of the RTX 4090. That's a pretty substantial increase in not only power draw, but also cash coming out of, well, your bank account. So hopefully it does actually deliver a lot more performance to justify such a high price. Now, I can't talk about the performance because A, I haven't even completed my testing yet, and B, I can't talk about it anyway, but just looking at the specs, it seems like it might give a pretty solid increase. And while paying 25% more money does kind of sting, and it wouldn't necessarily make the RTX 5090 a huge improvement to price to performance, unless the performance is insane, which again, we'll see. Nevertheless, I suspect many won't think twice about buying one at $2,000 if you can actually get one. And despite the fact that the RTX 5090, both in terms of specs as well as design, appears to be a massive improvement and way better than the RTX 4090, I also suspect that getting one at $2,000 could be a challenge. And if that's the case, well, if you were able to score an RTX 4090 for $1,600 and then you have to jump up to, say, $2,100, $2,200, or maybe even more than that to buy an AIB model because perhaps the IBs want to make their money as well, well, then that could be an even more substantial jump in terms of pricing over the previous generation. And I have a sinking feeling that the AIB cards will come at a very substantial premium versus last generation. And last generation was also very expensive. Now, I have no inside information as to what the actual final pricing for AIB cards will be. I haven't even asked anyone yet, but I'm sure I will soon. However, I just got a feeling it's probably going to be a lot, especially when I had hands-on time with them at CES. Some of those graphics cards were absolutely massive, and if more manufacturers other than just NVIDIA are doing stuff such as using liquid metal or doing all kinds of fancy designs for their cards, yes, get ready for some very, very expensive cards. But that being said, even though I am expecting the RTX 5090 for ones you can actually purchase that aren't completely out of stock to be very expensive, you might be asking the question, is it gonna be worth it? And that's a question that we can't completely answer until we get the full reviews here shortly. But what I can tell you is just looking at the specs, feeling in my hand, as well as looking at some of the AIB cards at CES, I have a feeling that those of you out there who want a lot more performance are probably gonna pay up for it regardless of how much money it is. I mean, to a point, of course, because I am expecting, based on the specs, it to be really, really fast. And because the cooler design has been improved so much, I also expect AIB cards are gonna be stepping up their designs as well. I think it's gonna be very impressive in terms of its cooling and acoustics as well. But again, we'll have to wait and see when the full reviews drop shortly. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RTX 5090, despite its massive improvements in design on the Founders Edition, will actually be able to cool 575 watts while giving you similar acoustics and cooling to the RTX 4090? Or do you think that we're asking for way too much and it's gonna be super hot and loud? Also, let me know how fast you think the RTX 5090 is gonna be in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.